Hey everybody, we're live here in our Functional Medicine Health Center. I'm Dr. Will Cole, um, where we see patients around the world here via our virtual functional medicine practice, via Skype and FaceTime and Google Hangout, as well as locally in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we've been doing these Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. EST on Facebook Live to talk with my friends in the wellness world about just whatever, about what the, what things they're loving in the wellness world today, maybe give some health tips and direction for people who are looking for answers in their life. And today I have my good friend, Melissa Hartwig, the Whole30 headmistress extraordinaire. Melissa, how the heck are you doing? Hi, Dr. Will. I miss you. I haven't seen you in a couple months, I guess, since Revitalize, and mm -hmm. it's too long. I miss catching up with you. Me too. I, I miss you too. And thanks for joining us today. So for those, uh, for those of the people that are living under rocks and in caves that do not know <laughs> who you are, uh, tell them about who you are. Just fill them in. Yeah, so I run the Whole30 program. I uh, co-created it back in 2009. And you can think of Whole30 kind of like pushing the reset button with your health, your habits, and your relationship with food. So it's a 30-day program, not a diet, not a quick fix, not a weight loss, designed to help people identify food sensitivities, change their relationship with food, create a healthy long-term relationship with food, and build new healthy habits that are actually sustainable. That's what I do. That's so cool. So tell, did, did the journey start with Whole30 with your own Whole30? And if so, like tell them about how it started for you personally. It did. So Whole30 back in April 2009 was like a self-experiment. My co-founder and I were sitting around after a really difficult training session. I was really into CrossFit at the time. And um, we had just gone to a seminar from Rob Wolf, who's sort of a paleo like OG. And he kind of outlined all of these foods that can have a negative impact on things like your metabolism, your digestion and your immune system. So sitting around, we just kind of like brainstormed, what if we did this super squeaky clean 30 day self experiment? We pulled all of these potentially problematic foods out and see what happened. And my co-founder had already kind of done this in his own life and had this amazing experience with the complete resolution of shoulder tendonitis. I did it to see if I could improve my performance in the gym and my recovery. What I discovered through the program was that my relationship with food was nowhere near as healthy as I thought it was. And that my energy and my sleep and my mood and my attention span and focus were all suffering based on the healthy diet I was eating. And it was such a profoundly transformative experience for me that I decided to share what I had done on my personal blog. And a couple hundred people said, I kind of want to try that. So in July, I wrote kind of the rules up really casually. And that was the start of the first Whole30. That's so cool. Yeah. Today, millions of people are doing the Whole30. What makes, for those, for those of the people that in the world that haven't tried a Whole30, what makes it so great for everyone, just the everyday person? What makes the Whole30 so great? I feel like we complete, we are like the anti diet. Everybody has dieted. You know what it means to restrict, to deprive, to count calories, to cut calories, to be hungry all the time, to white knuckle your way through it, to expand all your willpower as you diet, to get done with the diet and rebound because you didn't change your habits. And then you feel like a failure and it's more stress and it's more craving and your metabolism. Like everybody knows that story. We're exactly the opposite of that. We're changing the paradigm. There's no diet speak. It's not about weight loss. You're not allowed to step on the scale. We're really supporting you in every single aspect of the program, talking about things like growth mindset and your relationship with food and helping you build new healthy habits. And so the, the structure of the program is unlike anything you've probably ever done before, but that's a huge part of why it actually works because what you've been doing isn't actually working. Yeah, and for those, or everybody on Facebook, we're putting the links that Melissa's talking about, all her links uh, in the comment section below on Facebook. Um, okay, this is a question that you and I have talked about privately before, but the idea of intermittent fasting, which a lot of people are wanting to know, like, should I do this? How do I do this? They're hearing about it. And also the ketogenic diet. Both of these, I think, are trending in the wellness world. Uh, what, how do you think those tools work in the whole 30 framework if someone's doing the whole 30 should they do intermittent fasting should they do a ketogenic approach to whole 30 or not so you and i have talked about this and we are like exactly on the same page with it this is the way i think about it the whole 30 is your foundation 
you start with this 30 day self experiment and it is like the baseline for everything you do going forward involving your diet. It helps give you a personalized roadmap as to which foods do and don't work for you and in what context and in what quantity and how often. That's a 30 day self experiment that should be stand alone. If you are trying to experiment and you throw like three or four factors into your diet at once, when things start working well, you won't know what to credit. And if things start going wrong, you won't know what to blame. So start with the whole 30 and just do the whole 30. Don't carb cycle. Don't try to count macros. Don't try to IF. Don't try to do keto on top of it. Just stick with that 30 day experiment. Once those habits are solidified and you feel like you're really solid and you found a good balance, then if you want to play around with IF or keto or carb cycling, or maybe just tracking your macros for a while, cool. But that's like the frosting on your whole 30. I can't say cake. I'll say meatloaf, like the mashed potatoes on your whole 30 meatloaf, right? That's how I think about it. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I think that they need to get the foundation right. Because I think a lot of times people, they sabotage themselves by doing everything all at once. And they, they feel like, like you said earlier, a failure when you just have to get the basics down first, get comfortable with food. And can we talk about this? F food Freedom. I love that book of yours. Can you tell everybody about that? Because I think what we're talking about right now ties into that is I think that Whole30, after your first Whole30, Food freedom is kind of the next step of your figuring out your relationship with food. Can you tell everybody about that? Yes. So it is easy to do any dietary like protocol for 30 days, right? Doing something for 30 days, you know, even if it's really hard or really strict or really outside of your comfort zone, like anyone can do anything for 30 days. It's after the 30 days are over that people struggle with. Even if you did the whole 30 and you feel awesome and you look awesome and you built new healthy habits, there still needs to be, I have discovered, some structure or framework or guidance around how to take what you've learned and turn it into an actual lifestyle, because that's the goal, right? We hear everybody, all the dietitians and all the nutrition experts and doctors saying, well, you have to make it a lifestyle. And people are like, okay, cool, I want to do that. How do I do that? And Food Freedom Forever outlines a three-step plan for exactly how to do that. It's a balance between you making your own decisions and kind of riding your own bike and me providing you with like, I'm mixing analogies, but like bumpers on a bowling alley, right? So if you go too far off track, I can help get you back on track. And ideally you go longer and longer periods of time just doing your thing and you need less and less time coming back to a reset and getting back to a balance. So true, awesome. So, all right, I'm gonna get hypothetical here. If you had to hypothetically pick one food and one supplement that's changed your wellness game, what would it be? Ooh, that's so hard. I'm tempted to say hot sauce for the food because I just like love it so much. But I'm going to say, honestly, bone broth has been the, is the food. And bone broth actually is kind of a little bit like a supplement at the same time. Um, it's trending right now. Everyone's talking about bone broth, you know, it's like this, but it like legitimately is an amazing, I hate to use the word superfood because it's so overplayed, but it's got a whole bunch of stuff that we're missing in today's modern diet, the end. And it's really valuable stuff. And if we're just eating muscle meat and we're just, you know, not like making our own broth and cooking the bones down like we used to and eating the organ meats, we're missing out on some good stuff. Bone broth makes it super easy for me to get things like collagen and amino acids like glycine and proline and magnesium and calcium into my diet in a really delicious way. So that's been a total game changer for me. And now we have so many convenient products. Yeah. That if I'm feeling lazy, I don't even have to make my own bone broth, which is kind yeah. of a shout out to, and I think they're whole 30 approved, but our friends at Bonafide Provisions, yes. awesome frozen bone broth at Whole Foods. We'll put yeah. the link in the comment section below, but yeah. And, they do. and have you tried their drinkable bro bone broth and veggies yet? Yes, I have. Oh my gosh. Game changer. That stuff is like hydration plus nutrition plus deliciousness. I'm in love with them. Yeah. So Bonafide Provisions at Whole Foods. And online, I think you can get the drinkable veggies with just veggie juices, no high fructose fruits with bone broth as the base. It's pretty awesome. It's so, so good. Yeah. So, and supplement. You didn't give me supplement. You're just saying bone broth for supplement. Well, I don't really take a lot of supplements. I won't lie. I probably should. And we generally recommend people take things like a probiotic and vitamin D. I do take vitamin D3 basically every day because I get tested about twice a year and I'm chronically a little bit low. 
Um, I probably could be a little bit better about taking a regular probiotic and maybe some magnesium regularly, but generally speaking, I'm pretty lazy and like supplementation isn't a huge part of my daily diet. Okay. So something that I know is part of your daily routine is sort of the mind body component to wellness and maybe even spirituality. Um, can you tell everybody about for yourself, how that plays into your wellness game and, and if it does play into your wellness world? Oh, in a huge way. So I'm a huge proponent of self care and self love. And I know that that concept can be very airy for people like love yourself. Okay, cool. How do I do that? But I'm a really big fan of identifying areas of my life in which I can like self care. Uh, one example is that I, I buy myself flowers once a week. I love it. It makes me feel really good about myself. It's like a little bit of an extra special treat because traditionally that's done for you, but I'm like, uh, -uh I'm going to do it for myself. I have really something pretty to look at in my dining room every day. So that's a huge kind of area for me. I make sure to take time every single week to what I do, what I call church, go to church. And that's going out into my mountains and I hike and I'm by myself or I bring a friend with me and I don't have headphones and I don't have distraction and I'm fully present and I'm grounded and I'm connected. And like, this is where I do a lot of my reflection and a lot of my gratitude work. So I build time into my day every single day for self-care because unless I am paying myself first, I have nothing to give to anyone else. You, my friends, my family, my community. So I'm a huge advocate for that. And uh, speaking of your days at church, the tourism department of Utah and <laughs> to pay you. <laughs> I know. I do post a lot of pictures and a lot of Instagram stories and I feel like people look at them and they think like, I didn't know Utah looked like that. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of awesome here, but I don't want to tell too many people because then it will get crowded. So yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. quite a bit of people. I, don't <laughs> I know if you see this, this trail start to <laughs> get crowded, you'll know why. I know I'm going to be mad. Just tell everybody, you know, like, oh, it's awful here. It's super oppressive and nobody has any fun and there's nothing to do. Just, you could target somewhere else. Say you're like in North Dakota somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so what's new and upcoming with you right now? I know you have some so ex I, I'm so excited for you this December, but tell everybody what's coming up in the whole 30 in Melissa Hartwick world. Yeah, so I'm a sucker for punishment, and I have two more books coming out at the same time this year. So this will be like the second year in a row that we've released two books at the same time. I'm really excited about these, though. I should have brought them over so I could have held them up. But we've got Whole30 Fast and Easy Cookbook, which is full of 150 all-new, like, fast and easy recipes. So it's very short ingredient list or short prep time or no cook or slow cooker, sheet pan suppers, just ways to get Whole30 meals on the table fast, which I love. And then we've got Whole30 Day by Day, which is like a 30 day kind of half field manual, half journal for the program. So it is me walking you through every single day of your Whole30, what to expect, some motivation specific to that day, some tips, some resources, guided reflection so that you can stay more closely connected to the journey. They're cool. And the pre-orders are up now for both of those books, right? They are up and we've got some really cool pre-order bonus content for people too. So if you put an order in through any of the, you know, online retailers or your local bookstore, you can then submit the receipts and download some handwritten notes from me and some bonus recipes from the cookbook. Very cool. And we put the link in the comment section below, whole30.com slash books. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I, I, I think we're we're out of time here, Melissa, but I just want to pass. thank you so much. You are loved here tremendously. And just thank you so much for being a friend to me and just a supporter of what we're doing here. Oh, thank you so much. This was really fun. I feel like we could do this like every other day and have a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> no, we could, but, but we have a cap at 20 minutes, but you're right. I could talk to you for, for a long time. So thank okay, well, I'll come visit soon or you come visit me and I'll take you to church. That's, I want to go to church in Utah and then you need to come out here and we, you and Bill and Haley and I can yeah. all. Done. Cool. All right. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Will. Bye. Bye.